plateaus, like when you hit a point in a language where you just don't seem to be getting any more progress, what do you do to get by that? Mm. Good question. I feel like it comes at various stages, right? So in the beginning, you're learning so fast and it feels like you're constantly improving because you know nothing to begin with, right? Or next, next to nothing. I feel like there's always something. There's always a few cognates, you know, taxi <laughs> always seems to be every language you get by with that. Um, but yeah, you, you feel like you know nothing. So then as soon as you learn just one word, you're up here. Then you learn two words and poof, you're up here. You know, you're just constantly climbing and making progress. But then it begins to stagnate and you begin to feel like, actually, I can't construct these sentences on my own. I can't, you know, how do I get beyond this? And I think then it's really important to have been documenting. You know, like, like I said with my notes about the idea of recording myself, and speaking these things, well, that's really helped because then I can be like, oh, I haven't learned Guarani for like three weeks when I was in Cuba. Oh. And then I can go back and listen to those things and think, you know what? I can hear my mistakes from way back when. And I can tell that I've, I've already made progress. I just need to keep going. I just need to push through this plateau of, of knowledge. And, and it will get slower because it sort of goes like this whoosh, with those individual words at the beginning. And then it sort of begins to slow and then you know and it's just a constant i mean the other thing to remember is that language is so alive and flexible that you're never going to be fluent in a language and by that i mean you're never going to know every single word understand every single word that every possible speaker in every possible accent could say you know even in English, like I hear new words all the time and I'm like, what does that mean? Who made up this word? What, you know, there's things that I don't understand in my native language. And we forget, we feel like when we're learning another language that we're going to get to that same level and understand everything. When actually we forget that we don't understand everything in our native language to begin with. So just being, you know, kind of remembering that and feeling like, you know what, if I've reached this plateau, it's not because I'm useless. It's not because I'm rubbish. It's because this is the challenge to, to kind of keep me going further. And you'll constantly find that the more you learn, the more it feels like there is to learn. But that's not a negative. <laughs> it's not like a case of, oh, okay, I've got to, I've got to this, this level, okay. But then let me just see where I'm going. Whoa, that is, there's like more than I've learned so far up there. How is this a thing? How is this possible? But actually, that's a good thing because that's going to, constantly be giving you things that you can be learning rather than feeling like well I've done that I finished now move on to learning woodwork or I don't know how to bake the perfect cake whatever you know something else um so yeah I, th I, th I think that when you get to that plateau just if you've been documenting then just take a little look back and see where were you on that first day what we how did you sound what words did you know can you notice any mistakes um, social media is great for this. So like on Instagram, for example, um, I host something called the Instagram language challenge where every month there's a prompt list of 28 words that you can use to inspire a new piece of language each day, or even to inspire practicing some stuff you already know in the language you're learning, share a photo, share a video, you know, you could have written it down. You could share a video of yourself speaking, whatever it is, and then use the hashtag IDLC in the caption and you're keeping track. You can then go back to your Instagram feed and be like, oh, yeah, three months ago, <laughs> all I knew was, hello, thank you, <laughs> right? And now I can do all of this stuff. So something like that that's like a challenge, but that's going to also document your progress in some way to, to kind of remind you. And then also remembering that it has to be fun. So when you feel like a plateau, it's often then kind of we get these negative feelings of like, well, I'm never going to be good enough. I'm just going to, you know, kind of, there's so much to learn. I'm never going to get there. There's no point. I'll just, I'll just end here. Well, actually, if you kind of cut out that negative thinking and you can kind of say to yourself, you know what? I've learned so much already. I want to keep going. Let's make this fun while it's difficult. You know, so maybe that's the time when you sort of take a step back from the, the books and the serious stuff you're using to learn and go and watch a film. Find some music. Find something that you love in that language that can keep you going. I mentioned that I started learning Spanish when I was about 13, 14. The reason I wanted to do Spanish was because I had the Shakira album, Laundry Service, that had like three or four songs on in Spanish <laughs> that I wanted to translate. I was like, I want to understand what she's saying. What? 
And I was like, well, I've done French at school. This can't be that hard. And uh, as it turns out, when you have a gem dictionary that does not contain every word <laughs> or every verb form, it is quite hard. But actually, when you then have the proper resources, it becomes a lot easier. So, yeah, I think that kind of finding something you love can be a really powerful motivator to keep working through that plateau as well. Right. So w one thing I've noticed, like if I go and watch a film or something, I kind of like start tuning out of the actual language. Um, how do you like actually continue practicing while still keeping it fun? Mm. So you can do this with, I think, any sort of like leisure resource, if we want to call it that, right? So like books and film and TV, music, podcasts, whatever, whatever it is that, you, that, you're, that you've chosen. So we'll take film as an example. It's very easy to just tune out. And so you have these two options. You can either use it as a very passive resource or as a very active resource. You're probably going to have more fun, realistically, if you're using it very passively. So if you're using it to supplement what the other stuff that you're learning with the sort of serious resources, <laughs> quote unquote, then, um, then you can probably enjoy it on a very passive level and you're not necessarily going to get much from it. You might learn or be reminded of a few words, but you're not going to really be learning anything new from it as a resource. However, if you take like a smaller element of it, right? So like a film, an hour and a half, generally, that's, that's pretty long. If you take maybe the first five minutes or even less than that, like a 30 second conversation between two characters and really like hone in, you can make it a very active exercise to think, you know, okay, what are they saying to each other? Um, try maybe to write it down, what they're saying, try and repeat what they're saying as they say it, you know, and, and just like use little pieces. And then once you've begun to get comfortable with that and taking kind of small elements and really like it's almost like it's like a sponge I feel like any resource for language learning think of it as a sponge and you can kind of go like this and wring it out a little bit and get something from it sorry I'll stop moving my hands for the light um, or, or you can you can really really wring it out and get every every last thing that you can from that resource right so if you've got a film you can you know watch the whole film maybe once a week once a month whatever and it depends how much you love it and how much you can bear to watch it again. <laughs> um, and then maybe like every day, you just take a little scene piece by piece and you're really extracting everything from that. And so uh, that way it can become much more active. But I think generally when you're watching, it's very easy to become very passive. Um, and that's, that's okay. It's okay to be passive. If you wanted to be more active watching the whole thing, you could just take like a notebook. If you've got it one with, with subtitles, either in native or your native language or the language you're learning right um then then you could be using that as a, as a thing to kind of keep your mind active thinking well any new words i want to write them down it doesn't matter if you then go and learn them it's just helping you keep tuned in to the, to the language when you're watching so that could be a thing if you want to use the film as a whole